I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. Obviously we have three clutch packs. The first one is way back here and this is the one where I made a mistake. And these clutches, as all of you who looked in there, these, these outer notches fit into the case. The inner notches fit into whatever drives it. It's probably on this. It splines on somewhere. Where do they go? Oh, that. Okay. Well, they go. On. Oh, yeah, this one, actually. You're right, because this is behind that. This is the front one. Yes, they're, they're they're like oil holes. There's four, four. So it's it's. This has got also one of those frags, one one way clutches like that. Uh, this is the rear um, apply piston. This is pretty easy to get out usually. Usually. It's always best to have the right tool. I'll be right back. All right. There's a snap ring, a big washer that holds everything together. We got some springs, lightweight springs. You can see it's real little ones. And then you got a ply piston in here. It should come out. Now, these, not this one, but some other ones, will have three seals. You've got two li oh my gosh, that's hard. It's split. See how it's splitting? That means it's hard. So there's, there's a combination of problems besides that apply piston. So that's this, the seal that's going to be in the kit? Yes, these seals come in a kit. If you ever use these tools, be very careful. They puncture well. Skin and otherwise. Your buddy. That's an engineering thing. <laughs> Sparks go away, right? Alright, so it's it's a um, the cross section on it is is kind of like a a straight section, it's held into the groove and then it has like typically like a 45 degree or whatever lip seal it faces out towards the pressure so this remember I told you this has pressure points one of these it looks like this very big one right here is what supplies pressure on the inside if you look at this channel right here this goes through that's what puts the pressure and these other passages are for this this stuff here okay and they go into the case which goes into the valve body which is the brains of the whole thing so there's, an, there's two seals on this. I like that. Towards your buddy, not your body. <laughs> so that's that system right there. This is pretty basic. You can see that slips down there. That applies these clutches. It's pretty simple. Um, going back together, it's just a matter of being careful. Uh, there are the, the hardest part of put, putting these together is getting that lip to compress without catching and ripping. And a lot of times you'll have some difficulty, or I will have some difficulty, and I get it in there and I'm going, did I mess it up? Yeah. And and Murphy, if I take it back apart, it's fine. If I don't. It's not, so I still take it apart. So you took it out. like you had a forced it in there and But that doesn't have lip seals, so it does. It, it's got a kind of a square cut plastic ring that comes. I don't know what that was. It could have been silicone from something. You had a question? So, so philosophical. Philosophical. If I were, if I were doing this job, um, I would. <laughs> Consider Hypothetically that, or philosophically? At both. I would okay. consider that an assembly. So I would strip it apart and then 
put the new pieces back into it as an assembly and put it to one side. Because for me, I would forget the subtleties of how it all came apart by mm -hmm. the time. So rather than doing a full strip down mm -hmm. and then a full back together, when you're working for you, do you do a full strip down and then put it back together again? Or do you? Yes. Like, okay. I throw everything apart. Yeah. Except for the valve body, I typically do that. You know, at the end is when I usually go through that. So everything's off the bench, and I can lay out my springs and valves and all that kind of stuff and focus on that. And typically I will get three or four phone calls. I'll have two or three mechanics interrupt me. So that's that's how I work. But See, that's what I always get worried about when I'm doing a job like this, is it spreads out over a couple of days, and I'll forget which orientation the O-ring went in or something like that if I don't do it mm -hmm. as sub-assemblies. You know that little thing you call your wife with? Yeah. You can take thousands of pictures of that. That's something we didn't have 30 years ago. We did not have digital cameras, right? If you took pictures of stuff, you had to have them developed and hope they turned out, right? So it's, but philosophically for you, I would advise you go with your way. And, it's, and, and anybody else who's watching this, don't, don't just think that something you've never had apart will go back together with that perfect memory. Uh, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up. Because it seems, I, I, maybe it, I make it look too easy, but there's a lot of potential for mistakes, and you don't know it's a mistake until the car's back together, sometimes until six months later. So, here's the next clutch pack. You see, there's clutches in there, and those engage into this. So when it goes back together, you've got to wiggle it until you make sure you got all of them lined up. And that can... And that's with that transmission standing up, too. That's how you put it back together. Uh, and then these clutches, like we discussed earlier, all line up with this. Okay. So now this one is pretty easy to get the clutches out because you have your snap ring that comes out so easy. Okay. And then you can actually just dump these out, usually, if you can grab it. Transmission fluid is pretty slimy. So here we have that other sec second clutch pack. This has three clutch packs and two bands. And you can see these clutches are not bad, really. But you can see some burnishing there on that steel, right? I don't know if you guys can see that. I see some. Yeah. So that means it was, it's, it's got some miles on it. And you can see waviness in that burnishing. So it's a good thing I got all the steels. But you said that the Mercedes clutch No, no, the Mercedes had the flat ones. It was, suppliers have changed over the years. So when that was done was a long time ago and there were a few suppliers. Um, so the wavy ones are not for this transmission. That's for that different transmission. I, I seem to remember that the, the, the <coughs> wavy steel it was up against the flat steel, and then it was up against the friction. So no, I'm talking about the clutches, not the steel. So the, oh, the Steels are flat. So the actual flat Wave is in flat this part. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, and also another thing on those new, newly supplied clutches for the, the four-speed hydromatic, is there a combination? If you look at the clutches, halfway through is this, this fiber, the other half is a cork. And you flip it over, and it's, it's the same way. So that cork absorbs some of that shock also. But this, if you rub your fingers on it, you look at it closely, it's starting to deteriorate. So it's showing its age. Um, and this kind of stuff can happen when you have a pressure loss, such as that band holding. That would, band. would you replace that clutch? Absolutely. Yeah, you will. Because I have a kit, yeah, okay. and I'm a professional. And the law states if you overhaul the transmission, you have to replace all the friction, soft parts, all the rotating rings, and all the seals and gaskets. What's the total hours in the job of this? I think our total on this is 22 hours, something like that. Is that right? In and out. So maybe it's four grand. But it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure 22 hours total for the transmission. For the hydromatic four speed, it's like 30. It's more hours. It's more takes more time. Are all these plates identical so you don't have to care about the order? Uh, yeah. yeah. They do have funny looking offset dogs. I usually
kind of rotate them to keep it as balanced as possible. But 